Did I have some hard questions? Sometimes they're the hardest. Since 1945, the International Monetary Fund was established in the past 70 years, and has played a significant role in the global economic and financial crisis. 三月下旬 ，IMF 总裁拉加德到访中国三天，会见了中国国务院总理李克强、央行行长周小川等多位高层领导人，并在中国发展高层论坛期间三次发表演讲。他对于中国改革及中国全球角色的期待不言而喻。作为 IMF 历史上首位女总裁，她怎样看待中国经济改革的挑战？她如何管理世界最有权势的金融俱乐部？这位律政俏佳人为何能够屡次转型成功，并兼顾工作与家庭？在一个春意盎然的下午，财新传媒总编辑胡淑丽专访了拉加德。China's economic growth was slowing down significantly in the first two months, and some market participants are quite pessimistic about the future. How do you think of that? Well, it it has. Slowed down a little bit, going from you know 7.7 down to 7.5. We do not see that as a, as a major issue, given the, uh, the the development of the Chinese economy. It is only normal that it should slow down a little bit and gradually over time. It's really going to be a question of quality growth.、Um, Good adjustment of the monetary of the monetary policy,、um, keeping under watch the development of credit, and conducting the reforms that have been、um, flagged by the、uh, the third plenum,、um, which which will be conducive to a good stabilization of the Chinese economy. IMF warned about the shadow banking system and uh, uh, local financial vehicles as early as 2010. Do you th- do you say things are moving toward、uh, the right direction? You know, the shadow banking has、um, developed almost、um, in the same sequence as regulations. And supervision has increased, and that is not only specific to China.、Mm-hmm. It has happened in the same way in the United States. And、uh, clearly, it can be beneficial, but it has to be checked, and it has to be controlled, and it has to be supervised because it does,、uh, you know, significantly increases increase the,、uh, the 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 monetary mass, and and has to be checked. So how to Weighing between、uh, wealth recognition and、uh, financial stability, you know the rules of the market imply that you win, but you also lose. And the fact that there has been, and that there is, and that there will be some default, you know, on reimbursement of bonds, for instance, lately,、uh, is actually a good indication of. What markets actually do? They're not only、um, they're not only upsides、uh, to those market operations. They're downsides as well, and people have to measure and assess the risks associated with the financial operations that they're doing. You know, you cannot go into bond buying or internet、um, uh, banking without understanding that there are risks associated with it. And you know the fact that those defaults have taken place is, however difficult it is for those who take the loss, it's a healthy movement, in our view. As you just mentioned, internet banking and we call the P2P financing are booming in China. Any lesson can be taken from financial innovation. Financial innovations can be good, but they also. Um, bear risk, and I think it is the understanding of the risks associated with financial innovations that needs to be flagged, that needs to be explained, that people need to be cautious about. And you know, the、uh, internet banking is one good example of a fast-spreading、um, practice. That people have to be cautious about. 
Trees don't grow up to the sky. China Central Bank is pushing uh, uh, interest rate and currency rate liberalization. Uh, people debate about the speed, the pace, and the uh, sequency. Um, it was very good to hear from Governor Zhu uh, that the interest liberalization uh, would take place in the next couple of years. This, in our view, is helpful. Uh, the internationalization of the, uh, uh, the yuan would certainly also be a good, uh, a good project to be had in the same period of time. And um, if that turns the renminbi into a currency that is included in the basket of special drawing rights issued by the IMF, the better. Uh, the IMF and China do not always agree with each other. So how do you describe the relationship between them? and what should be done to improve the cooperation for the two sides. You know, it's, it's typical of friends to not constantly agree with each other. And it's because we are friends and partners that we have a rich dialogue that sometimes um, results in disagreement, discussions, but we've always managed to resolve those issues through a good dialogue, and I hope it continues. 自二零一一年上任以来，拉加德统领着欧洲三驾马车之一，就危机深重的欧洲各国与水货。三年来，爱尔兰、葡萄牙、西班牙等国逐个毕业，下一站是乌克兰。三月二十七日 ，IMF 公布了一项规模为一百四十亿美元至一百八十亿美元的对乌援助协议。How do you see the developments in Ukraine, and how will IMF help and make sure? necessary reforms would happen? Well, the Ukrainian authorities um, have asked uh, the IMF for support and uh, we have conducted enough fact findings now so that we can move into the negotiation phase uh, for the Ukrainian people, for the Ukrainian economy uh, to improve, to restore its uh, financial um, situation and we very much hope that we will soon be able to determine what is needed, what measures should be taken, and how much uh, funding Ukraine needs to improve the position. But we know for sure that it will address the exchange rate of Ukraine, it will address the fiscal policy and the fiscal path the country has to take, and uh, it will certainly also look at some of the structural reforms that are needed uh, for Ukraine to uh, pick up um, a growth path. It's going to be very, very hard, a big challenge for... It is a challenging situation because the, the country has, uh, uh, has tried for quite a few years, but now certainly the Ukrainian people have the benefit of a platform uh, which has economic, political um, uh, ramifications that, that could be for the better, for them. Uh, the 2010 quarter reform was just blocked by the U.S. Congress. So how will you keep your promise on IMF reform, and especially on that to the emerging markets? It's a very important project. Uh, it's one that was decided uh, collectively by um, many, many countries, particularly all the G20 countries, one for which the deadline was 2012, and one where the membership has not been able to complete the job because one key member is still considering instead of completing. It's the membership's responsibility, but equally, I'm very, very concerned that we can achieve that reform because it's a matter of credibility for the institution. It's a matter of delivering on a promise that was made to all members, including the emerging market economies in particular, because they have to increase their quota, they have to increase their voice, and uh, it is a key reform uh, that needs to be completed. But there is only so much that I can do. I can you know, explain, I can preach, I can brief, I can implore, I can casual, I can uh, 
uh, be upset, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the legislator of the country that decides what is uh, in the interest of the whole community, which is what is at stake there. But do you think, is there still opportunities or very few? I think there is a window of opportunity mm -hmm. in the next few weeks, and I hope that materializes. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, we'll have to, um, you know, look at the options and, and see what is, uh, what is best for the, uh, for the IMF. We were very impressed by your speech about the new network assessment. National authorities have to not only be mindful of their domestic markets, but they have to be mindful of everything else outside their domestic markets. Because whatever is decided at home is going to have consequences elsewhere, which will in turn sort of bounce back to the home market. So that's why I think that a new multilateralism is called for. One where countries actually listen to each other, appreciate and measure what the consequences are of their domestic policies, and where the IMF can play a significant role in measuring what we call the spillover effects, and in giving advice that is not just predicated on the domestic factors, but also what happens elsewhere in the world. Lajadian you are the first women boss on many positions. What's your special weapon? I, I don't think it takes weapons, uh, <laughs> but it certainly requires um, a lot of hard work to begin with, um, a lot of resilience, good health, and a lot of support from your family, your friends, your community, uh, because it's not easy. So you have two children, right? Yes. Yeah, how old are they now? 27 and 25, so they are young men. Uh -huh. Except when things go wrong. In that case, they come back and they are young babies. How do you balance uh, family and the work? So it's difficult to do both. And, and you cope and you, um, you struggle and you, you, you um, try to plan your day, your week, your month. Uh, and it's uh, always... Uh, difficult and you feel guilty because you felt that you should have done certain things better and you haven't had time. But at the end of the day, I think it's a question of number one, organizing yourself, mm -hmm. planning uh, and being prepared with delegating and accepting that you cannot do it all at the same time to perfection. If you had a daughter, what would you want her to be? Herself, yeah. whatever that is. <laughs> But I would certainly insist on her getting the best possible education so that she could be independent and not dependent on anyone. I knew that you had a quite a bumpy road to uh, for fit into French government. Mm -hmm. And how uh, did you change things around you then? I was a little bit of an outcast when I joined the French government. I was drafted by President Chirac. Uh, to be the trade minister. But I did not belong to the institutional base from which politicians are drawn to government. And uh, as an outcast, I, I came with the rules from the private sector, with the thinking of the private sector, uh, with the methods of the private sector, and I changed a few things. And uh, um, people found me different but I insisted on making sure that there was diversity and that new rules could apply as well as the traditional rules. You were like, described as Uncle Sanxon sometimes in, uh, by French citizens. So how do you feel about that? Well, I was often called the American <laughs> when I joined the, uh, the French government because people thought I was you know, coming from another place and operating in a different fashion. Um, but it's good because, you know, diversity enriches 
uh, you enriches the environment, brings d new ways of, of conducting business, new ways of rallying support, new ways of uh, operating. So I, I, I kept that as an asset and not as a, as a burden on my shoulders. How do you compare France and the United States in terms of business and the political environment? I think it was Oscar Wilde who said about the United States that it's a nation that has youth for tradition. And I think there is an element of that in the way the United States welcomes innovation, accepts failure, and uh, constantly um, sort of rejuvenates itself. On the other hand, it has little by way of history compared with European uh, countries, particularly France, which is the country I know best. Um, so you, that gives you an idea of how different it is. Can you let me know how did you make your decision to go back to DC, to the IMF, and what have you brought to the fund that changed it? You know, all changes in my professional life have been dictated by circumstances. Uh, meeting people, being encouraged to do certain things. Um, you know, I was, I was a practicing attorney and uh, the management of Baker McKenzie uh, was going through a tough time. I was called upon to serve as member of the executive committee and then chairman of the firm. I was then later drafted, literally by President Chirac, and uh, after I had served as Minister of Finance for France, circumstances were such that people asked me to campaign and to uh, um, become the managing director of the IMF. So it's, you know, every, uh, every turn in my life has been predicated by circumstances, um, um, the influence of people, and uh, I rarely uh, thought twice, and I never planned ahead of time. So it's, it's, it's been a, an interesting journey. <laughs> you think what are you different from your predecessor? Well, I'm a female and they were males. <laughs> I think that's a big difference. Beside that? Beside that, uh, I think as a woman, you, you, I, I think I bring certain things that um, I could summarize as the willingness to listen before I draw conclusions, um, the desire to reach consensus with others, um, the hope that the team enjoys working together and working with me eventually, um, I think maybe a focus on people more than numbers, but that may have to do with uh, my, uh, my academic background as well. So where do you see yourself after this job? Well, I want to do this job first, <laughs> and then we'll see about the rest. Uh, yeah, can you do me a favor? Because I brought a book, uh, the book Chinese edition, and I want to sign for me. Oh, what is it? You know what? I never, I never had this one. No, I'd be happy to say, yeah, come.